Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's St. Louis Four School Fair. My name is Jeff, very happy to have you with us tonight. This evening, we're gonna hear from six institutions all in the state of Pennsylvania. We have Bucknell University, Gettysburg College, Franklin and Marshall College, Dickinson, Swarthmore, and wrapping up with Villanova University. As a reminder, all participants who are attending your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. You can ask questions of any of the institutions at any time through the Q&A button below at the bottom of your screen. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Bucknell University to get us started. Thank you so much, Jeff. So I'm gonna quickly share my screen with all of you so that way we have some visual pieces to look over. Welcome, I'm really excited to be able to speak with you. My name is Corrine. I'm an admissions counselor here at Bucknell. I'm also an alumna of the institution, so a little fun fact that I can throw out there. So without further ado, Bucknell is rooted in a tradition of uh, exploration, innovation, and breaking new ground in higher education. While we're proud of this tradition, we're not limited by it. We are constantly expanding our campus by providing new buildings for our students. We currently just opened Academic East and we're in the process of building an entirely new building for our Freeman College of Management. And we're also expanding our campus by hiring new faculty members who are truly experts in their field and are really providing a lot of hands-on experiences for our students when they're on our campus. Let me get my mouse here. There we go. So you don't have to wait until your senior year of college to conduct research in high tech labs, take a starring role on the center of the stage, or even start your own business. Here on our campus, we encourage students to get involved in these hands-on experiences from the very first day that you step foot into the classroom. In fact, we expect first year students, even those who don't even have their major selected yet, to immerse themselves in a range of various different opportunities whether that's animal behavior, like you're seeing on your screen, accounting, French, finance, mechanical engineering, or music, you'll find opportunities that other schools will reserve those opportunities for their final year. Those experiences equivalent to why we have about 92% of our students returning for their second year on campus. We are currently the largest liberal arts college in the nation with about 3,600 undergraduate students. We have three distinct colleges that you can see here on your screen, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Engineering, and the Freeman College of Management. But those colleges don't exist on islands by themselves. They're uniquely intertwined and really allow you to follow your passions and your various interests without ever feeling boxed in or constricted. We understand that your college search process isn't a straight line and neither should your college experience once you're on our campus. Our low student to faculty ratio really ensures that you get to know your professors as well as you get to understand and learn about various different aspects of your classmates when you're in the classroom. Students are creating their own ideas, they're pursuing their research projects, performing in theaters, operating in our maker spaces, and really making a difference. You can make your own course like one of our current seniors, you can conduct research abroad, as well as start one of your own businesses and our really popular Management 101 course. Our unique approach to education yields some groundbreaking results with about 96% of our graduates from the class of 2019 reporting successful outcomes upon graduation about nine months afterwards. So that means they were quickly moving into a career, they're starting a job, they're going into graduate school and or they're volunteering of some kind. For those students who are starting their careers, the average starting salary is right around $60,000 and they're working for some large name corporations like Google, Facebook, Amazon Robotics, Southwest Airlines, JP Morgan, Deloitte, Nielsen, just to name a few off the top of my head. When students graduate, they're going to be joining a really strong alumni network of about 55,000 strong. And our alumni are constantly working with students to help them find jobs and internships during their entire four years on campus. As college towns go, it's hard to imagine a better one than Lewisburg if I'm going to be a little bit biased. I like to describe it in similar terms to Stars Hollow from the show Gilmore Girls. Like Bucknell itself, it's neither too small nor too big, so you'll never get stuck in traffic and you'll have plenty of opportunities to get involved. Lewisburg is about eight blocks long and has really cute mom and pop shops, boutiques and restaurants. We have a 1970s art deco theater, as well as other um, activities like an escape room and a park in the middle of our space. With over 450 acres on campus, it truly means that you will find a lot of different activities to immerse yourself in. 
whether that's something like Canoe Battleship that you can see on the bottom of your screen. We are a Division I school, so you can get involved in athletics. We also have club and intramural sports. You can join a residential college your first year. We are primarily a residential institution with about 92% of our students residing on campus. And we also offer a broad program. So we have Bucknell in programs, which are students going abroad with our professors, or over 200 other options like Semester at Sea, just a name on off the top of my head. When it comes to submitting your application to Bucknell, I know it's a little early to start thinking about that, but in my opinion, it's never too early to start. There's no stereotypical Bucknell student. We can say that successful applicants excel in challenging classes, they're pursuing their passions in various extracurricular activities, and they're engaged in the world around them, and they're curious about the world around them. We are a holistic review process, and we truly look at every single word that you put into your application. We look forward to getting to know you through those extracurricular activities, your essay, your transcript, as well as those letters of recommendation from your teacher and your school counselor. We offer both need and merit based aid for our students, with about 50% of our students receiving Bucknell specific dollars and about 60% receiving further aid of some kind. Our average financial aid package is right around $39,000, just so you're all aware. So if you share that sentiment that many of our current students have of a desire to make a change and wanting to make a strong impact in any community that they enter, then Bucknell is a great place to begin and a great institution to look at. Here is my contact information. So if you do have further questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you, as well as using the Q&A function in this chat. Thank you so much. Let me stop sharing. There Thanks, appreciate that so much. Uh, again, we have uh, next up, Gettysburg College with Mary Smith. Great, thank you so much. It's great to hear, great to be in the presence of so many wonderful liberal arts colleges in the state of Pennsylvania, or I should say the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Before I get started, I'm gonna add a few links to the chat. If you're like me, I'm a very tactile learner. I need to see things, play with things, touch things. So there's a lot of great information that I just put into the chat, including some video, including some fast facts. With that being said, my name is Mary Smith. I am one of the senior associate directors from the admissions office at Gettysburg College. I'm also a proud class of 2000 alum, so I've been there a while, <laughs> not as long as Gettysburg, but Gettysburg College is very well known for its place. So these are some favorite pictures, but let's, let's get right to the map. We're a little farther away from the Midwest, but we're an easy, easy flight. We are right smack dab in the middle of South Central Pennsylvania, about an hour and a half north of Washington, DC, about an hour from Baltimore, 45 minutes from our Commonwealth capital of Harrisburg. And it's really easy to get to us. Flights, trains, buses, we have our own fleet of transportation vehicles that pick up and drop off at all the major hubs, Baltimore, Washington International, Harrisburg, Reagan International, DC, we'll pick you up, easy peasy. So that's a first important note. Our students are coming from all over the place, from about 40 different states and about 40 different foreign countries. They really are very diverse in all of their backgrounds, experiences, um, geographic locations, all of the above. And our students are busy. We are a 24 seven liberal arts and sciences nationally ranked institution. And when I say liberal arts and sciences, as many of us on this panel this evening are on, are part of the liberal arts and sciences, it's not just about going deep and in depth to your major, which we have over 65 different majors and courses of study, but it's about getting the breadth of exposure to other disciplines as well. And how that makes you, frankly, a not only more well-rounded individual, but a more marketable individual in today's job market. We know that our students need to have three things by the time they graduate. They have to have the degree, and we're going to make sure you get there. We have a 92% retention rate, students freshman to sophomore year, and at about an 85, 86% graduation rate in four years. But not only that, we want to make sure you get the hands-on experiences. We are all about the research, the internships, the hands-on career immersion to get you in depth with your particular area of interest. And then three, it's all about who you know. So we wanna make sure you're networking with people in your interested field as well. This slide highlights a lot of different areas, but 
you know what, I'm going to mention my favorite one, and that is our first year walk, kind of circling that picture down in the bottom right corner. We have a tradition at Gettysburg, just as our students did back in 1863, pop quiz, 1863 was the Battle of Gettysburg, but then a few short months after that, a very well-known individual gave and delivered the Gettysburg Address. And our students do reenact that the first or second day they're on campus, depending on the year, where they walk up through the Nash, through the town, they block off all the streets, the townspeople are cheering them on, it's a big event. And they get to the National Cemetery and hear a reading of the Gettysburg Address. How will you change the course of our nation's future? Because what happened in Gettysburg changed the course of our nation's future. It's really exciting, actually. So one cool tradition. A lot of different things to be involved with, but I will mention some highlights from an academic perspective, that nine to one student faculty ratio with a lot of students doing research, a lot of students studying abroad, about 60% of our students study abroad at some point in their four years at Gettysburg. And they participate in unique programs like the Eisenhower Institute for Public Policy and Leadership that was founded by President Eisenhower himself. We have offices a block from the White House or our Sonderman Conservatory of Music that is one of only a few conservatories entrenched within a liberal arts setting or our Garthwaite Leadership Center or our Center for Public Service some unique programs, very distinctive to Gettysburg. Some interesting highlights for this year. We do have a new business major, a new business organizations and management studies major. We have a new international and globalization studies major. We have students majoring in things across the board. Sciences are strong, business is strong, economics is strong. The fine and performing arts are strong. We really have our fingers in a lot of different areas. And the only other thing I'll mention on this particular slide is the anatomage tables. We have a virtual cadaver lab. A lot of our pre-med students take advantage of that. They have opportunities to really get in deep hands-on on this incredible tablet, if you will, but it is a virtual cadaver lab that even med students in their grad school programs don't have access to. A little bit about financial aid, merit scholarships, and what we look at. Give you a moment to look at that. Gettysburg does a great job with need-based financial aid, merit scholarships, music scholarships tied into our conservatory, as well as a STEM scholars program for students who are underrepresented in the STEM area. They really get a lot of different opportunities. We wanna make sure that Gettysburg education is affordable for all students, no matter your experience or your background. And we look at everything through the admissions process. I'm your rep, as well as Daryl Jones, my colleague in the office, who has been the Midwest representative for many, many years. So you can reach out to either of us if you have additional questions or conversations or comments. Please feel free to be in touch with us. It's a pleasure getting to know you this evening. Please feel free to reach out and ask lots of questions in the chat. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate that. Next up, we have Franklin and Marshall College. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Caitlin Oliver, and I'm one of the senior assistant directors of admission at Franklin and Marshall College and a fellow alum, proud alum of the class of 2016. And I work with students um, from Missouri. So very excited to talk with you about Franklin and Marshall College. FNM is a small liberal arts school located in central PA, very similar to my colleagues on this call. Um, where we have roughly 2,400 students. And our students really come from all over the world, from 51 countries and 47 states. We feel that with our diversity on campus, we, it enhances the learning atmosphere because in an average class size of 17 students, a nine to one student to faculty ratio, you're not only able to engage with faculty, but engage with your peers and being able to broaden your mindset and have a forward thinking, reinventive and reimaginative mindset that will help uh, propel you forward in the academic, social and professional experience at Franklin and Marshall College. Four things that I'm gonna walk you through briefly today to make us up who we are and why I feel that the liberal arts experience at FNM and um, is, is unique um, in things that you will experience. The first thing is that we set new standards of academic excellence. One of our founders, Benjamin Franklin, has a quote that ends in, say, in saying, involve me and I learn. And you're definitely involved in the learning process. 
We do have a core curriculum that all of our students um, take, but what's nice is that you have the freedom and the autonomy to pick and choose what classes fulfill those requirements. And 80% of our classes are discussion-based, 10% are lecture-based, and the other 10% are made up of independent studies. So you are active participants in the classroom, engaging with texts and ideas. And you do have an interdisciplinary approach to the academic experience. And the first class that you will take at FNM are called Connections Courses. And these courses teach you what exactly it means to be a liberal arts student. I know when I was going through the process, people kept on saying, liberal arts is a great place for you. Liberal arts is a great place. And I didn't understand what that meant until I took the connections course, which teaches you that learning is not about hard concepts and ideas for you to decipher and depict and analyze, but it's about, you know, real world things or things that you talk about or experience on a daily basis and understanding that from different academic um, sort of disciplines and merging them together about something simplistic, which I think it's super exciting. Um, and I think it's a way for you to excel sort of ac academically and figure out what you wanna study. The second thing is that we personalize education. And at FNM, students can major, they can double major, which is two full majors. They can do a joint major, which is about half of two majors. You can add a minor to any of that. And we have 62 major fields of study. Our most popular majors at FNM are BOSS, which is our business organization and society major, government, economics, English, psychology, and really any of the STEM fields. STEM is very popular at FNM because we are only an undergraduate institution. Research can start as young as your first year on campus. And about 65% of our students conduct research during their time. So this is giving you know graduate level experience early on to add to your resume, add to your CV, and to enhance that academic experience for you. Another way to personalize your experience is through studying off campus. So we have over 200 programs in 60 countries where students will study abroad during their time at FNM. And again, those programs stem from as academic or as mission driven as you want it to be. So it's really up to you uh, to figure out what fits best into your curriculum. And of course, you have an advisor to support you throughout um, that process as well. The third point, what I think is one of the most important points is that we stand with each other and the community is really the, the core of who we are. And it's called the FNM elite. And at FNM, we're a collaborative environment where students and peer, your peers, uh, faculty, administration are very supportive of each other. We wanna see you succeed, but also challenge you in our rigorous curriculum. And how we promote our community at FNM is through our housing. Housing is guaranteed for all four years. Your first year, you get broken up into one of our college houses, which are living and learning communities on our campus. Um, and it's based off of the connections course, that first year seminar that you will take in your first year. Um, it's based on that course because on the first floor of every college house, there's a seminar room, a great room, a fireplace room, and a kitchen, all for the house's use. And in that seminar room is where you'll have your connections course. So that's super nice because you just come downstairs, go into the seminar room, ready for class, and you're living with the people who you're in classes with. And there's common rooms on every floor for you to engage and sort of socialize and do work together outside of the classroom. The living side is that every college house is student run and governed, and they have their own form of government that students will serve on on different programming from bagel breakfasts, Sunday night Sundays, hot chocolate hangouts, anything with food, get students hanging out and getting to know one another make our small campus a little bit smaller within those communities. And then we have over 110 clubs and organizations that our students are involved in. So there's always something for you to do, always um, a way to get involved and be a leader on campus. And then we succeed together. FNM wants to make sure that you're ready for success. And at FNM, we have the Office of Student and Postgraduate Development, which is a mouthful. Our students have shortened that to OSPAGOD. And OSPAGOD will set you up with an advisor as young as your first year to prepare you for that life after college, whether it be going to grad school, preparing for medical school, law school, helping you find a job, helping you find internships during your time at FNM, preparing you to apply for fellowships, really helping you articulate the value of the four-year experience that you just gained into whatever that world may be after. And then here's a little bit about our application process and my contact. I will also put my contact in the chat. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Caitlin, appreciate that. Uh, a reminder to students, you can ask questions at any time through the, uh, the Q&A box below. Next up, we have Sharon. 
and she will be representing Dickinson College. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here. My name is Sharon Lytle. I'm an admissions counselor and transfer co-coordinator for Dickinson College. So Dickinson College, we are the first college chartered in the newly recognized United States of America. And we were chartered in 1783 by Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, and he was a founding father. So our mission is to offer students a useful education in the arts and sciences that will prepare them for lives as engaged citizens and leaders. So with an enrollment of 2,400 students, our distinctive liberal arts approach translates into a competitive edge. So 98% of our graduates are in a job, internship, graduate program, or pursuing a fellowship within one year of graduating. Dickinson emphasizes small classes with extensive opportunities for research, field work, and internships in each of our 46 majors. So we have one of the top off-campus study abroad programs in the nation, and we were ranked number one in sustainability by the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. We are one of only few colleges in the country to offer majors, majors like international business and management and data analytics, which prepare students to be global leaders in an ever-changing economy. So one of the foundations of our curriculum is the ability to pursue your passions and interests through active learning in the classroom and in the field or laboratory. Our eight to one faculty student to ratio allows Dickinsonians to build close partnerships with their professors and our average class size of 14 encourages discussion based active learning. So you'll have the freedom to partner on projects and papers with your professors as early as your first year. And once you decide on a major, you'll have opportunities to pursue independent studies, write a thesis or complete a capstone project. And Dickinson professors are experts in their fields and bring diverse national and international expertise to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where we're located. So our interdisciplinary approach to majors, which are listed in red on this slide, uh, certificate programs and other coursework prepare students for turbulent problem solving and to think beyond themselves. So many Dickinsonians pursue a double major and or minor and will graduate in four years while experiencing more than one high impact experience. So think study abroad, internship or research. Dickinsonians develop creative, collaborative and intercultural skills with course requirements like cross-cultural studies and a US and global diversity requirement, sustainability, writing, quantitative reasoning, humanities and languages. We offer 13 different languages on our campus. And some of our most pro popular programs include International Business and Management, Law 33, where we have a 14 week intensive internship experience in Washington, DC, and Archaeology, where we're one of the only undergraduate institutions that offers an active dig site on campus for undergraduate students. One of the pillars of our institution is that we remain one of the only colleges in the nation to have hit carbon neutral as of 2020. So we infuse sustainability throughout the college using the campus, Carlisle community, and study abroad locations as living laboratories that advance our goals. So our innovative approach to sustainability offers unique hands-on experiences, many of which are run by the Center for Sustainability and Education. So uh, think of our 180-acre um, USDA grade organic farm um, where students can volunteer as early as their first year. Uh, they can pursue environmentally focused internships, rent a bike for free through our bike share program, visit the weekly farmers market in downtown Carlisle, all within walking distance. Dickinson is also a member of the Eco League, a consortium of six eco-focused institutions that provide access to nationwide ecosystem. Um, it, it experiences everything from Florida to Pennsylvania to even Alaska. I mentioned earlier that Dickinsonians take full advantage of travel and we are one of the world's most respected study abroad programs. So more than half of Dickinson students study abroad in more than 40 programs across 25 countries and six continents. So in 2019, Dickinson became the only U.S. institution to receive the prestigious NAFSA Senator Paul Simon Award for Comprehensive Internationalization twice when we initially received it in 2019 and during the initial inaugural year. So that's a really big deal and again shows our commitment to providing you immersive experiences such as through our 18 global programs where you're going abroad in non-tour essential locations and you even get a chance to stay with a host family, really having immersive experiences with the local culture and languages. And bringing it back to campus before first year students even set foot on campus, the Center for Advising, Internship, and Lifelong Career Development begins the 
academic advising and career support process. So regardless of the major or what you study, the center will continue to connect you with opportunities based on your personal priorities. So there's workshops, networking opportunities, alumni guest speakers, one-on-one -on -one consultations. Alumni like CEO Stephen Smith, who studied history and physics and is now the CEO of LL Bean, or founder of the healthware software system, um, Epic Systems, uh, and female billionaire Judith Faulkner are prime examples of how liberal arts education at Dickinson provides students to pivot and adapt to our world's ever-changing needs. And the biggest piece I want to emphasize is that internships are guaranteed for any student who may want one. I want to quickly highlight our application process for holistic in approach. And what's really important to know is that we really are committed to making a Dickinson education affordable. So we do meet 100% of demonstrated need for students who apply for financial aid through the FAFSA and CSS profile. You're automatically considered for scholarships when you apply. There's four of them. Our fifth one, the Presidential Scholarship, is an opportunity to do programming alongside President Margie Ensign. And at the end of the day, we are also taking into consideration how this past year, how a global pandemic may have affected you academically. So know that when we are reviewing your application, we're not just taking into accord what your passions and interests are, but again, your whole experience, even regardless of how this past year may have affected you. Um, I want to encourage you to come visit campus. We are open for in-person visits, and I'm going to go ahead and put my information down in the chat. It's great to meet you all, and I hope to talk with you a little bit more this evening. Thanks so much, Sharon. Appreciate that. Next up, we have uh, Swarthmore with Danny. Go ahead, buddy. All right, let me just share my screen here. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Swarthmore College. My name is Danny Whittles. I'm a senior assistant dean of admissions, a uh, territory representative for Missouri, among other states. Um, and you've heard that a lot of the other representatives here are alumna or alumni of their colleges. I am not an alum of Swarthmore, but I am, perhaps more importantly, an alum of Ladue High School. So go Ladue, Boo Clayton. Uh, but thank you for joining me tonight to learn a little bit more about Swarthmore. Uh, Swarthmore is, much like some of my peers in this room, a small liberal arts college. We do offer engineering as well, which is unusual amongst liberal arts institutions. But we are, uh, even amongst our peers, on the smaller side. We have just under 1,650 students. Um, uh, and we are located about 11 miles outside of the city of Philadelphia. So you get the best of both worlds and that you get the, the you know, uh, liberal arts campus while also having access to a major city. And what I want to do in my six minutes tonight is talk a little bit about what distinguishes Swarthmore from other institutions, especially other small liberal arts institutions, um, rather than talking about the liberal arts in general. Um, so first and foremost, Swarthmore was founded as a Quaker institution, and I think that's really important because the ideas within a Quaker community, the lack of hierarchy, the fact that everyone has this internal light, no one's light is uh, lighter or darker than anyone's, uh, anyone else's, really impacts all of the things that we do at Swarthmore and all the ways in which our campus operates. So keep that in mind as I talk about some of the other things uh, throughout this evening. As I mentioned, we're just outside of the city of Philadelphia. Um, and so by going to Swarthmore, you have access not only to Philly, but also some of the other major cities along the Eastern seaboard. But we do have a train station on campus. The train takes about 25 minutes to get into the city. Um, ultimately, I don't want you to come to Swarthmore with the idea that you will be living in Philadelphia. You very distinctly won't be. Uh, but I would say that on average, students go into Philly maybe once a month, a couple times a semester, and it's a great resource that's there for you and easily acceptable via the train or if you happen to have a car on campus um, that are, that's a little bit different than the ways in which cities might be uh, accessible to you at other institutions. We also are located amongst a number of other small liberal arts colleges. So Swarthmore is part of what's known as the Tri-College Consortium uh, with our friends Haverford and Bryn Mawr. And for those of you who know Quakerism, that's a pun. Uh, but Haverford, Bryn Mawr, and Swarthmore, if you go to any one of those three institutions, anything you can do at one of those schools, you can do at any of the others. Uh, so shout out to Haverford and Bryn Mawr who aren't here tonight, but students at Swarthmore can and do go see speakers on those campuses. They join groups that are from those campuses. They take classes there. They check out books from their library. Uh, most importantly, they eat at Bryn Mawr's Dining Hall, which is the top rated dining hall in the country and serves things like lobster mac and cheese. 
Uh, so regardless of what you have the opportunity to do at Swarthmore, you also have the opportunity to do that at Bryn Mawr or Haverford. You can also take classes at Penn. You won't, but you do have the opportunity to do that as well. Um, as I mentioned, Swarthmore is located just outside Philadelphia, but it is, it is its own nat uh, natural beauty as well. We're on 425 acres. Uh, we are a nationally registered arboretum. Uh, and actually this is the amphitheater where you will graduate that you saw in one of my first pictures as well. Um, typically ranked among the, the most beautiful places to graduate in the country. Um, Ultimately, Swarthmore has a lot going on. Uh, you've heard some numbers already. Swarthmore has a whole, over 150 different clubs and activities. But I think what's more important than that number is the fact that we are what's considered to be a cash-free campus. So everything that you do at Swarthmore is completely free to you. Uh, that's really important because I think for two reasons. First and foremost, obviously, you have access to everything. You can go to a sporting event, you can go see a guest speaker, you can join a club, you can participate in some sort of theatrical performance and all of those things are free to you. But more importantly, all of those things are free to everyone else as well. And so uh, regardless of your financial situation at home, all of your classmates are going to be on an equal financial footing when it comes to accessing the social events that are happening at Swarthmore. And never again does somebody have to tell you, oh, I'm sorry, I can't go see your play because I don't have $10. Instead, the conversation goes, I can't go see your performance because I hate opera and we're not actually friends, which is a really different conversation, but I think a really important distinction on your experience at Swarthmore as compared to potentially other institutions where those things do cost money. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a liberal arts and engineering institution, but most notably, we do not have any separate colleges for these programs. When you apply to Swarthmore, you apply to Swarthmore College, uh, and upon arrival at Swarthmore, you then get a chance to explore and take classes in all sorts of areas and decide whether or not engineering or French or interpretation theory, which I've worked at Swarthmore for six years, I still don't know what interpretation theory is, please don't ask me, um, but which of those programs might be right for you? Which is most interesting to you? Um, and you have a chance to explore and figure out what you want to what you want to major in. Part of that is because your first semester at Swarthmore is graded entirely on a pass-fail basis. Um, we want you to have the ammunition to take classes outside of your comfort zone. Chances are most of you have never taken a class in peace and conflict studies, or you've never taken a class in religion, or you've never taken a class in film and media studies. And so how do you know whether or not you like those things if you haven't yet taken those courses? Um, skipping ahead, because I know I'm a little bit low on time, um, keep in mind the various resources that Swarthmore has for students, regardless of the type of background you're coming from. Most importantly, when it comes to applying to Swarthmore, we have a wide variety of opportunities for students uh, to access Swarthmore. And most importantly, not only do we meet 100% of needs like some of my friends here, but Swarthmore is a need blind admission process and we meet your need without including any loans as part of our financial aid package. So those three commitments are really important in regards to accessing Swarthmore, keeping in mind as well that once you're here, everything is free for you on campus. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. And I look forward to hearing from some of you later. Thanks so much, Danny. Uh, again, reminder to students, don't feel, uh, don't hesitate to ask questions along the way in the Q&A box. Last up this evening, we have Vanilla, uh, Vanilla, Villanova University, excuse me, Matt. No, no worries. Uh, what, last, last on the scorecard, but first in your hearts, right? So I'm, so I'm glad to join you all this evening. My name is Matt Harris, and I'm uh, one of the senior associate directors of admission at Villanova University. So this is my 10th year at Villanova, and I've worked with students from the St. Louis area that entire time. So I'm excited to join you this evening. And I'm actually originally from the western side of the state, from Kansas City, and so I'm a, a Missouri boy also. So it's good to be here with you this evening. So Villanova is a medium-sized Catholic university, and we were founded back in 1842. And you know we're a tight-knit, inclusive community that welcomes students from all religious beliefs to our campus. Um, we have just about 6,700 undergraduate students, and our suburban campus is located just north of Danny uh, by a couple miles uh, in suburban Philadelphia. 
And you, as he mentioned, we're the sixth largest city in the country, and we also have really easy train access into the city. We're a highly residential campus with three years of guaranteed housing with the option to apply for a fourth year, and about 85% of our students are living on campus. As you've heard from others this evening, being in our kind of location in southeastern Pennsylvania really does lend the whole mid-Atlantic to you as part of your campus, and, and we're close to New York, the shore, Washington, D.C., and so all of that can be a part of your experience if you would like for it to be so. What you're looking at in this picture are the twin spires of the St. Thomas of Villanova Church, which is our main campus landmark. And something distinctive about Villanova is that our education and that our philosophies are rooted in our Augustinian principles. There's thousands of colleges in this country, but, but there's actually just one Augustinian university, and that's Villanova. So it is something a little bit distinctive about us. And on our university seal, we have three Latin words from St. Augustine, veritas, unitas, and caritas truth, unity, and love. And those three values are really universal to us as Villanovans and how we want it to both shape our education and also the experience on campus for students during their four years. Villanova takes pride in a, a personalized educational experience that, that offers close contact with our faculty and our advisors. While you're a student with us, we hope to not just grow your mind, but also your heart. Our students are ambitious and engaged both inside and outside the classroom. We offer over 80 different majors and minors throughout our four academic colleges, and those four undergraduate colleges are our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our Villanova School of Business, our College of Engineering, and our Fitzpatrick College of Nursing. Uh, our small class sizes average just around 23 students within those programs. And outside the classroom, typically around 86% of our students will participate in at least one research experience, and actually over 93% typically graduate with uh, an inter internship experience under their belt. We're also one of the top producers for Fulbright students in the country, so students at Villanova are globally minded and prepared for success. In a more artistic sense, our students produce two social justice documentaries each year. In this past year's film, Sankofa, uh, took home the gold medal at the Student Academy Awards, and we're actually hot off the presses. We actually had one of our alumni receive an Oscar last evening, and so even without having a film school, we even have some cool connections in, in that world as well. So wherever your interests might lie academically, we, we hopefully will have an outlet for it at Villanova. So transitioning from that academic world to the extracurricular, we're really lucky at Villanova that students who choose to attend have been super involved in their high school communities and are really wanting to continue that involvement while they're here at Villanova. We have over 260 student organizations and clubs to participate in, and our students understand that in order to ignite change, they really have to enact change from the ground up, which is why service to our community is something that they take the most seriously. About 75% of our students are involved in one of our service organizations, and they actually perform over a quarter of a million hours of service annually, including overseeing one of the largest student-facilitated Special Olympics programs in the world. We have a really active student body and, and actually on an athletic sense, over two thirds of our students are involved in athletics in some way. Most compete super casually throughout intramural sports or as part of one of our club sports teams. But we do also have 24 division one teams that mostly compete as part of the Big East Conference. Um, if you are a bad high school athlete like I was, all students do receive free tickets to cheer on all 24 of those sports, including our football program, our three-time national champion men's basketball programs. Um, to bring this whole evening to a conclusion, our coach played at Bucknell, so there's your full circle on the, uh, the presenters this evening in Pennsylvania. But we are a school full of joiners where our students take pride in their involvement, and no matter where your passions may lie, hopefully there will be a place for you to, to explore those while you're at Villanova. I hope many of you will choose to apply either this fall or in future years. And, and just quickly, we're a member of the Common Application, and we have four different ways that you can apply. We have early action and regular decision, which are both non-binding, uh, which means you can apply to as many schools as you want. Plus, we have early decision one and early decision two. Our first deadline for all of those isn't until November 1st, and so you have plenty of time to do your research and figure out which of those four plans might be the best path for you. And as you put together your plans for applying, just to note, we're remaining test optional for this upcoming year, and we'll also be updating our essay prompts for you um, within about the next month on our website, so you can check back for that. So if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you to check out admission.villanova.edu to learn more about our university and our admission process. Additionally, you'll be able to sign up for upcoming virtual visit opportunities we have, and soon you'll find more information there about our resumption of campus tours on June 1st. We are almost ready to have you back to visit us.
Uh, we'd love to see you in person, and I hope you'll stay in touch with me if you have any questions as you move through this admission process with us. But until then, go Cats, and I will uh, hand things back over to Jeff. Thanks so much, Matt. Before we wrap up here, I wanted to invite all of the representatives back on screen. One of the things I like to do is kind of ask them, <clears throat> excuse me, ask them for something different, something fun. So I've asked them this evening to give us their favorite event or tradition on their individual campuses. So we'll go in order that we presented. So Bucknell, we will start with you. Absolutely. So I think my most favorite event that we have on campus is one of our traditions, and I was able to experience it firsthand as an undergraduate student, and it's called our candle lighting service. So we have a four day pre orientation program for our students that really just acclimates you to campus. And on the day before classes start, typically it's a Sunday evening, our whole entire first year class will walk through our Christy Matthewson gates, uh, which is just part of this whole tradition, and they will walk onto the quad. President Robin will stand in the middle of our academic quad and give a welcoming speech and then he'll choose a lucky first year student and go and light one of their candles and then we pass the light amongst one another to really signalize we're officially starting our Bucknell experience and then it comes full circle the day before you graduate again the Saturday evening before Sunday's commencement on the quad and we will line the quad as a senior class reminisce on our four years as undergraduates President Brahman will give a going away speech, choose one of the seniors to light their candle, sing the alma mater, and we blow it out together. It's very emotional by your senior year because you cannot imagine how fast everything has gone by. And then we actually walk out the gates on the day of commencement, and then we go and proceed to graduate on the quad. So very sentimental, very full circle, but an absolute wonderful memory that I have from my experience there. Very fun, very fun. Gettysburg, what do you got for us, Mary? Sure. Well, I have too many favorite traditions to choose from, so I just put a link in the chat <laughs> in terms of <laughs> several of them. But I think something that really stood out to me about my own Gettysburg College experience, and, and frankly, I quiz alumni on this question all the time, is our honor code. It's something that has been in place well over 50 years at Gettysburg. We sign it to every paper, project, exam, everything students turn in. But you're on your honor. It's a statement of mutual respect and responsibility between our faculty, our students, and peer to peer. And it really impacts the ethos of our place, of our entire campus. I mean, you go into the library, which is 24 hours, and students will leave their laptops, they'll leave their wallets and their cell phones, pick up and go to lunch, and it's still there. I mean, that, that's a part of the character of our place. And it all stems to me around that academic honor code. So if your family members are an alum, I promise I will quiz them at one point in time on that. <laughs> Very cool. Caitlin, what about Franklin, Franklin and Marshall? Yeah, so all my traditions um, are about food, right? So I love food and my favorite. Oh, I like you a lot. Let, let's talk more about food. <laughs> so my favorite tradition is called Flapjack Fest. And it's the night before the first day of finals where our dining hall is open from eight to midnight and breakfast is served really late, you know, take a break from you know, studying in the library all day, walk over to the dining hall with friends. There's like scrap paper on the tables for people to draw and be stressed from finals. But the caveat to it is that the breakfast is served by faculty and administration. So it really is a time again for our community to come together and for faculty to show their appreciation for all the hard work that you're putting in into their finals. And some students take that time to ask those last minute questions um, uh, that they're working on for their final exams. Very fun. So next up, we have Dickinson College. What do you got for us, Sharon? Um, I, like Mary, have too many traditions to count, but one of my favorite new things that has happened on campus was actually student driven. And um, I love that I can say that as an institution, as old as we are, we don't always rest on our laurels and we really adapt to what is important to our student body. So we recently launched, launched a Dickinson and slavery tour, walking tour on campus, where students can see how former slaves impacted the history and the prestige of our institution. We recently had two buildings on campus that were also renamed from former slave owners to former slaves themselves. So an, like another really piece about how what's important to stu the student body and faculty and staff and creating an inclusive community is something that's continuing to evolve on our campus. Very interesting. Uh, very interesting. Danny uh, Swarthmore. Yes. Uh, sorry, I was chatting with the Bucknell rep about how great of a baseball player Christy Matthewson was. Anyway, 
Um, so uh, Swarthmore has a number of traditions. Some of them are actually very similar to ones that you've heard from uh, my friends who have gone before me, but I will point towards the pterodactyl hunt. Uh, where suddenly 65 million years of history are gone and pterodactyls run rampant on campus. Um, essentially, it's just a really awesome live action role play where uh, Swarthmore students dress up in trash bags and have foam bats and run around and hit each other and try to defeat monsters. Um, so if you like uh, running around and making a fool out of yourself, you might love it at Swarthmore. I can do that. I can do that. All right, Matt, wrap us up with Villanova. You know, I think our one that whenever we ask the students, I think one of their favorite ones they mentioned, well, I'm not gonna talk about basketball. They always bring up that. But besides that, um, we have, um, I had mentioned briefly our Special Olympics program that we host. And I think it's a, a really cool um, connection for the state of Pennsylvania. It's the, the fall games for, for Special Olympics of the state. And we have about 4,000 of our students that plan through this amazing weekend that's like minute the rivals a miniature Olympics. They run a torch from the city um, and even do the, the whole uh, opening closing ceremonies and everything. And so that's something that I think brings our whole, our whole campus together in November. And so it's a pretty cool weekend. Very fun. Well, on behalf of StriveScan, I certainly want to thank all the representatives this evening for their time and talent and sharing information about their institution. Uh, certainly thank you to all of the attendees for visiting and joining us tonight. Uh, I noticed there are some uh, there are some additional questions coming up. If they're not answered by the time I click this off, the uh, institutions do get a transcript and we'll follow up with you accordingly. On behalf of StriveScan and all the institutions, everybody stay safe. Have a great evening and good luck in your college decision. Bye-bye now. <laughs>